The fragility of life is front and center for all of us this year. We are more aware of our mortality than ever before. I personally have figured out with the help of one of our amazing church members that I am probably no longer a time billionaire. He explained it like this. There are a million seconds in 11 days, a billion seconds in 31 years. Young people are time billionaires. They are the ones who have the most time to invest for the future. Like all of you, I don't know how many seconds I have left. I hope I'm still a um, time multimillionaire. Still, the clock is kicking down and will one day reach zero. What the fragility of life has led me to do this year is to value each day, each moment, to reassess how I want to invest my last millions of seconds. My hope is that when we as a nation have finally achieved this herd immunity, that we will be more concerned with the quality of our time investment than we ever have been before. But we don't have to wait to then. Time is a gift that needs to be managed and converted into goods and services daily, or we waste it. As we approach the new year, we can be intentionally investing our time for eternal significance right this very second. We can invest, not waste, the valuable gift of time that we have all been given. Mary did, Joseph did that very thing. He took time to listen to his dream and travel south to Egypt, preserving the billion seconds that God had given Jesus to invest for humanity to the glory of God. Another and final lesson that Joseph and Mary experienced that we too are experiencing is global interconnectedness. Mary and Joseph were in Bethlehem for the Roman census. The Magi came to pay homage to the baby Jesus from the Far East. Joseph took Mary and Jesus to Egypt to keep them safe. So let's just look at this for a second. Rome is in Europe. Bethlehem is in the Middle East. The Magi came from East Asia. Egypt is in Africa. That was the whole known world in first century Israel. From the beginning, Jesus's birth was a global event. The world we now live in is also global like never before. Around the world, we are all experiencing and fighting this same pandemic. We are experiencing our interconnectedness and interdependence in unprecedented ways. What each of us does matters and has potential for being a positive or a negative in the lives of a multitude of other people. An event in the fall of 2019, somewhere in Wuhan, either in a laboratory or in a market, eventuated in the entire world um, undergoing a deadly virus attack. From that single event, there have been worldwide close to 80 million cases and 2 million deaths. It is an illustration of the butterfly effect in operation. The butterfly effect was 
first discovered in 1963 by a meteorologist named Edward Lawrence. He reported on this butterfly effect at a meeting of the New York Academy of Science with these words. When a butterfly flutters its wings in one part of the world, it can eventually cause a hurricane in another. In time, the butterfly effect became um, accorded the status of a law, and it has been found operating not just in weather systems, but in a wide variety of non-linear systems, such as geology, biology, finance, philosophy, physics, politics, psychology, and robotics. We have seen and experienced the butterfly effect this year as a small virus set free in far off Wuhan, more than 6,000 miles away in eight time zones, has caused a deadly pandemic here in California and everywhere else around the world. Lawrence, in a more positive twist, later said, if the flap of a butterfly's wings can be instrumental in generating a tornado, it can equally well be instrumental in preventing a tornado. The birth of Jesus was the ultimate positive butterfly effect event.